What is the reason for our Christmas joy? It is being happy and thankful for everything the Lord provides in our lives. For all the marvels, mercy, generosity He bestows upon us. And that's also the way He gently invites us to take an active part in His work of redemption in the whole world. Friends, there are so many Christmas carols, and I suppose everyone knows some. This Sunday, I'd like to begin with, with a carol which is, which is considered one of the most popular in the whole world. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare Him room, and heaven and nature sing. I personally think there is literally no one who never heard this one, nor who doesn't remember how it's beautiful, joyful, almost glorious in its melody. Joy to the World was written by an Anglican great minister and hymn writer, Isaac Watts. And even though it is the most popular carol melody in the Northern Hemisphere, its origin is not known broadly. You see, Joy to the World was not written for any Christmas intentions at all. Originally, it was a poetical interpretation of one of the Psalms, 98, published firstly as one of many other Psalm interpretations. As you see, there is nothing there about birth giving of the Blessed Virgin Mary, or about the little Jesus in a manger? No. In the first and in the second stanza, Watts wrote about Christ's second coming at the end of times, his reign when he will appear again in his glory, and then the third stanza which speaks about many blessings which God bestowed upon his whole creation. So this carol, one of the most famous in the world, was an effect of we can say, of a coincidence rather than desire. But why this one, out of so many psalms which Watts interprets? We may never learn what really stands behind uh, its history and its great reception in the world, but I think part of its success is to be found in this glorious, majestic, almost mystical melody. Some even identify its source in the very famous Handel and his famous Messiah as an inspiration behind Joy to the World Melody. And today, on the third Sunday of Advent, the tradition of, uh, of the Church suggests us celebrating it as a Gaudete Sunday, the Sunday of Joy. As on the previous Sundays of Advent, though, there is not much if any, on the actual Christmas nativity scene, but rather it speaks the gospel and so on about John the Baptist, his ministry of preaching, baptizing, evangelizing. One can even wonder, I suppose, why we put this man, John the Baptist, in the center of our Advent preparation if he doesn't really speak about Jesus' birth. Well, that's precisely where we can find an insight in this famous Joy to the World carol. Because just look how, how greatly, yet simply, this majestic song serves us in this preparation for Christmas festivities. It does the job. It does the job even without mentioning the main theme of Christmas. I wonder, how is it possible? It truly really is a mystery of the faith, which is put into practice, isn't it? The awesome creation of our Creator makes us all wonder now and praise how beautifully He has done everything. And Christmas? Well, that holy and moving occasion celebrated by so many in the world, it's not even mentioned. 
but it is lived. In the same way as the melody of that song carries almost like on its shoulders the main message of Christmas. In the same way, we can silently prepare ourselves for what we anticipate, what we await while thinking of the newborn Savior in a manger. It is precisely that answer that John the Baptist gives to those inquiring about the nature of his mission. When John appeared as a witness in the wilderness, the Jewish priests started asking him, Are you the Messiah? But notice, please, that the Gospel states rather a unique way of John's answering those questions. First, he doesn't explain who he is, nor who told him to do what he is actually doing. He just simply uh, states, I am, I am a voice that cries in the wilderness, make a straight way to the Lord. So rather than directly revealing his own name and authority, he prefers to show who he is by what he does. And the same thing happens today in the first reading, which we take from, uh, from the prophet Isaiah. Uh, we read there, The Spirit of the Lord has sent me to bring good news to the poor, to bind up hearts that are broken, to proclaim liberty to captives, freedom to those in prison, and to proclaim a year of favor from their Lord. And the way of this slow revealing is a quite common tool God uses for His people throughout the ages. That's how God was preparing throughout generations for the coming of the Savior. That's also the way how, how He gently invites us throughout generations as well to take an active part in His work of bringing this great redemption to the whole world, the joy to the world. And so that is the reason for our Christmas joy, being happy and thankful for everything which God promised us to give us, and indeed He actually does so. For all of the marvels, mercy, generosity He bestows upon us in all our lives. So may these words Joy to the world, the Lord is come, let earth receive her king, also become our signature, wherever God will put us in the days and weeks to come. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed my Sunday sermon, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and to share it with others. God bless you.